let me introduce uh, to you our first speaker in the afternoon, Constantino Zalis. He joins us from the Centro Brasileiro de Pesquisas Físicas in Rio de Janeiro. Constantino is famous for introducing the notion of what is known as Zalis ent entropy and Zalis statistics, and he has shaped our view of power laws in complex systems. The Zalis entropy is a generalization of the Boltzmann entropy. I'm sure you all know this. Welcome. Well, good afternoon. Well, so Stefan challenged all of us to do something uh, with some meaning in seven minutes, in six minutes now. And uh, so I decided to make a kind of uh, comparison, analogy between beauty and complexity. So, there you have beauty, a Venus at the British Museum, it's in the central part. There is always plenty of people around that one, and for a good cause, you can see she's absolutely charming. So that's beauty and that's complexity. So, like beauty, complexity is hard to define and easy to identify. Why they are hard to define and easy to identify? I don't know the answer, but I can think of uh, two possible questions related to that. One of them, the difference between general and particular. So beauty or complexity is general, but a beautiful system or a complex system is a particular case. Another possibility for understanding why it is so is the difference between rational and intuitive or emotional. When you want to define something like beauty or complexity, you have to do a big rational effort. But to identify, you don't have to do any particular uh, effort. It's immediate, it's very easy either because it is intuitive or because it is emotional, but uh, it doesn't need big explanation, the identification, whereas the definition is another story. Like beauty, complexity can be uncertain. And many of the talks that we heard this morning gave you flavors of these uh, aspect of uncertainty, of complexity, and beauty is the same. And there you have Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, where the women look in different angles, different shapes, so it's certainly not very certain. And there you have Wall Street, that you have always, you have all seen such uncertainty around. Like beauty, complexity can be sustainable. So in this Zen picture, there is an impression of something that is going to be sustained, that it remains. Like uh, the same happens in this complex system here. It has something that remains, even changing gradually until becoming an adult. Beauty can evolve, and so can complexity. So here you have beauty, you have Don Quixote, and in the prologue of Nivola from Miguel de Unamuno, there are some Spanish people here that I'm sure have read Miguel de Unamuno in the prologue, it is written, Don Quixote revealed to me uh, intimate secrets of him that he did not reveal to Cervantes. So Cervantes created Don Quixote, but Don Quixote is a very complex character. So it evolves and uh, starts having its own life, and Don Quixote can tell you secrets that Cervantes did not suspect. And here you have complexity. This is not the Etna, and I hope the editor will not become like this, but uh, it's certainly a kind of complexity that it is evolving in time. 
And this evolution in time, interestingly enough, is the title of one of the last uh, books by Elia Prigojin, From Being to Becoming. So being is something stable, equilibrium, dead. Somebody put this idea in the morning to becoming something that is evolving, going or trying to achieve some kind of equilibrium, but never achieving it. So evolution can change, can evolve in beauty and also in complexity. Beauty can be simple. And to me, one of the wonderful images of simplicity is the famous Nefertiti. And complexity in its simplicity, I could not avoid of thinking about entropy. <laughs> So I put that expression of the entropy, which when Q equals 1, becomes the famous expression of Boltzmann, Shannon, and others. And uh, of course, this is not a definition of complexity. But from my point of view, it is an important characterization of an <coughs> aspect of complexity. And I would like also to say that complexity, like beauty, can be useful. Here you have the Cariatides in the temple of Apollo in Athens. So they are very beautiful and they are useful because they sustain the roof. And here you have a mammogram. Here you see nothing, but if you process this picture with entropic concepts, you arrive to this picture where you clearly see the microcalcifications, and uh, some of these are smaller than one millimeter. And even Hippocrates would have a, a big work to identify this, but if you don't take care uh, uh, in good time, these, they will kill the woman. So it can be very useful complexity as well. And finally, I would like to think about where lies complexity. Complexity is in the system or complexity is in the observer of the system. Complexity is something objective or is it something subjective? Complexity, is it episteme or is it doxa? Complexity, is it a science or is it an opinion? And finally, uh, this is the the opinion that I have about complexity. Complexity is the problem. Yes, indeed, it is a problem. But complexity can be the solution of the problem. So I use myself, complexity, as a new and powerful paradigm, which is my attempt to answer Stefan's question. Thank you very much.